Hey baddies, welcome to Makeup in Session episode three, where we will be discussing why you would never need another makeup primer after this video. In the era of booming makeup trends and beauty influencers, the beauty industry has seen a rise in products. One of those products being a face primer that is often marketed as essential for having a flawless makeup application. But after diving into the hype, I've realized face primer isn't the golden ticket to flawless makeup application after all. In this video, we'll uncover the truth behind face primer and unveil the real secret behind achieving a smooth, flawless makeup application. Get ready to rethink your beauty routine and discover why face primer is a waste of money. The promoted purpose of a face primer is to help makeup apply more smoothly and give your skin a smooth and even complexion when applying your makeup. In short, do you really need a face primer before applying makeup? No, but we're going to dive into the common myths and misconceptions surrounding face primer and its application before applying your makeup. The first myth is face primer minimizes pores. While some face primers are targeted to minimize or shrink your pores, it's only a temporary effect that gives a smoothing effect to your skin, but it doesn't offer any long-term or permanent reduction in the size of your pores. Myth two, face primer prolongs makeup wear. As I've stated previously, it only gives your face a smoothing effect, so there is little to known evidence of face primer actually prolonging or extending the wear of your makeup. Myth three, face primer improves skin texture. Face primer isn't technically improving your skin texture over a long period of time. It's only temporary while you're wearing your face primer. It gives it this smoothing effect and that's all that it does. It's not improving your skin texture. It's only improving the texture of your skin while you're wearing that primer and you're applying makeup on top of that primer. So in actuality, once you remove that makeup, your skin texture is going to go back to the texture that it normally is. Myth four, face primer is necessary for all skin types. While face primer is more beneficial for those with oily or combination skin because you can find a mattifying primer that can control those oils and keeping your pores from overproducing oils while wearing your makeup, for dry and sensitive skin, it offers little to no help. In fact, it has proven to increase your skin issues that you may be having when you try to apply a primer on top of dry skin. Myth five, face primer is essential for a flawless makeup look. Although face primer can help create a more even canvas for your makeup application, it's not the sole determinant of your flawless makeup application. In actuality, face primer clogs your pores, creating more skin problems such as whiteheads, blackheads, and acne, as well as make your face look greasy and sweaty. When it comes to flawless makeup application, Face primer plays little to no role in achieving those desired results. Factors such as skin type, weather conditions, the quality of your makeup products, makeup techniques, and proper skin care are what play a vital role in the longevity of your makeup. As a seven year vet in the makeup game who hasn't used a primer in over five years to working on clients who I've never used a primer on not one single client, I can attest to the fact that makeup primer is not essential for a flawless makeup foundation. I was someone who had blackheads, I broke out periodically, I had large pores, and my makeup applications were hit or miss because of my dry skin and trying to find the right techniques and makeup application to ensure that my skin wasn't drying out throughout the day and becoming flaky or just looking a mess overall. And I was someone who stood by that Hydro Grip Milk Primer. I thought she was the best thing walking, okay? That was like the crack to my Whitney, all right? And I no longer needed primer. My skincare routine became my primer. But after creating and sticking to a skincare regimen, my skin improved tremendously. After I had two facials, my blackheads were completely gone. My pores, I don't even see them anymore. My breakouts are slim to none. The only time I really break out is if I'm eating something that I shouldn't be, which has a lot of sugar or something like that or if it's that time of the month. But other than that, my skin is flourishing. After consistently sticking to my skincare routine, I realized I no longer needed a face primer and my skin was like butter in real life, real time, no filter, no edits, just good skin and vibes. Which is why I'm here today telling you that you do not need a face primer in order to have a flawless makeup application. And this is not something that I think, it's something that I know. And I know it's effective because my clients, 
I don't use a primer on them. And I've never had not one complaint about the makeup application that I have done on any person. If you are truly wanting to achieve a flawless makeup application, the best face primer is an effective skincare routine. When you have a skincare regimen that is truly working for your skin, not only will it improve your skin, but it will improve your makeup because the foundation to flawless makeup is flawless skin, not a primer. And when I say flawless skin, I don't mean that your face cannot be breaking out. You cannot have a few pimples or you can have a few areas that you need to work on. But overall, flawless skin for me is when your skin is at its good, stable condition and it's controllable. You're not having extreme breakouts. You're not having major discoloration. You're not having bad acne. For me, that is considered good skin and your good skin can change. It's a trial and error. And if there's times where your skin may be worse than other days, but overall your skin days are good and your bad skin days are few in between. I truly believe that good skin is achievable by everyone. For some, it may take longer than others because you may have a skin condition you may be trying to correct, or you may need medicated products to help improve your skin. So that's what I mean by everyone can achieve good skin and it may take longer for others but it is achievable and you can get there with consistency, the right products, and an effective skincare routine that will cure the areas that you're wanting to improve. If you are someone needing a starting place to incorporate a good skincare regimen into your daily skincare routine, check out episodes one and two of my day and nighttime skincare routines, and that would give you a starting place and you can tweak it and adjust it according to your needs and what it is that you are wanting to improve with your skin. Now that we've gotten all the skincare out of the way, I've given you a daytime skincare routine. I've given you a nighttime affordable skincare routine, simplized for you so that you're not purchasing all these products that you don't need, that are unnecessary, that really does nothing for your skin other than just make you spend more money and apply more products on your face. We can now get into the basics of your everyday makeup for beginners. Make sure though, when you are incorporating a new skincare regimen into your routine, introduce your skin to one product at a time because what you don't want to do, especially if your skin is sensitive, is have your skin to break out and you're introducing your skin to two and three and four different products now you don't know which product is making your face do what. So if you have a really bad breakout, you're able to decipher, okay, this cleanser is making my skin break out really bad. I don't need to use this cleanser. I need to stop it immediately, give my, my skin a break for a few days, and then do some more research and find a better cleanser or an alternative cleanser that I can incorporate into my skincare routine that's not going to irritate my skin. When it comes to purging and a reaction, Simply put, when your skin is purging, you have little pimples. They, they can be red, but most of the time they're like whiteheads or just little pimples um, that pop up on your face, but they will go away. But if you start to experience irritation, burning, itchiness, or anything of that nature, you want to stop using that product immediately because that is a reaction and something in that product is not working well with your skin. And what you don't want to do is irritate your skin to the point to where you're damaging it even more than what it already is because that is setting you further back from your goal and who wants to mess up their skin when your skin is telling you i don't like this product so simply just stop using the product and try something differently be sure to subscribe so that you can catch episode four of the makeup in session where we will be going over everything of brows like step-by-step -step, detailed product recommendations and everything everything you will need will be in episode four in regards to your eyebrows so if you're a girly that's struggling with your eyebrows beat me there don't meet me there bye don't come over here hello oh my god oh my god oh my god Oh my God. I don't know why <laughs> I came up with the bright idea to come to the park and film knowing nature is always against me. I don't do wasps. I don't do bugs. The flies are irritating AF. It was nice out. So I'm thinking, oh yeah, let's go to the park. It's nice. It's not too hot. It's not too cold. It's just right. I'm feeling like summer is coming. 
although it should have been here by now, but that's besides the point. God's timing, okay? We're not rushing him, but I feel like why not just try to get into my nature bag, babe? That's why you see me in my trunk filming because I just can't. I can't. And then it's still wasps over here just bothering me. Like, why are you bothering me? Oh my gosh. Okay, back to the video so we can wrap this up.